Star Wars The Acolyte is not a good TV show. It might even be one of the worst live action Star Wars properties so far, and that's kind of saying something. But it's not all bad. Set towards the end of the High Republic period in which the Jedi and the Republic are at their strongest, most influential and predominant, someone is going around killing Jedi. Someone with the ability to use the Force who may be working for another, more powerful being. The Acolyte starts off as a somewhat intriguing murder mystery show, one in which we know right from the word go who did it. It's more about why they did it than who though, and the question of why permutates this entire show. Why did someone do something? Why did they respond like that? Why did they attack? Why do we care? There's a lot of whys being asked in the Acolyte and very few answers. At the front of the impressive cast is Amanda Stenberg as Osha and Mae, two opposed sisters with an intriguing backstory. One went the path of the Jedi, the other went down a darker route. She does a good job of portraying these two characters, but their motivations and depictions are a touch stereotypical and even vague at times. One is good, the other is bad. That's kind of it. And the bad one is purely bad because they want to be, there's very little backstory that explains why they do the things they do, and the backstory provided prevents more questions than answers. Saul is the primary Jedi lead, portrayed by Squid Game's Lee Jung Jae. He's probably the best thing about this show, his character is in many ways a by the books Jedi. He's experienced, he's capable, and he exudes a sense of control and knowledge whenever he's on screen. As the show progresses, we get a sense of some uncertainty in his past, as well as the possibility of dark actions that he may be haunted by. It gives him some depth, but the show spends so much time teasing and still a little time answering that it becomes more frustrating than interesting. Lee learned English for this role, and sadly, it sometimes shows. Often enough, it appears as though he's saying the lines rather than understanding them, but I reckon a lot of the problem lies with the lines themselves and the direction rather than the performance. The rest of the cast is stacked. There are familiar names and faces throughout this show, but they're given very little to work with. Carrie Ann Moss, perhaps the biggest name, is reduced to playing a near emotionless, one note, stereotypical Jedi. Daphne Keane, an always fascinating actress, doesn't get much to say or do either, and Charlie Barnett is initially presented as a cool, potentially intriguing character, but is ultimately pointless in the overall scheme of things. The problem is that the Acolyte is so focused on progressing the story on a basic level, it has little to no time to spend on developing the characters. After the 8 episode first season, I still couldn't tell you much of anything about anyone in the show. And I certainly don't care what happens to any of them either, because the show has failed to make them worth rooting for. The editing and pacing of the show are partly to blame. Everything moves along briskly, making it entertaining, but there's no time to breathe or take in events as they happen. It appears that a lot of content was cut or just didn't exist. There are scenes in almost every episode that end mid-sentence rather than in a natural end point. Everything feels rushed and underdeveloped. There's a little explanation or description of anything or anyone, and it makes the Acolyte a very surface level show. This wouldn't be such a bad thing if the surface level story was good, but again, thanks to the editing, writing and structure of the show, it isn't. There are two flashback episodes, one of which makes the other completely redundant and unnecessary. These flashback episodes are among the best of the season, but they derail the momentum and progression of the story, and they fail to adequately explain motivations and goals, instead opting to point out past events on a basic level. The overall story does have its moments with some decent reveals and twists, but with no larger purpose or explanation it often left me scratching my head in confusion or shrugging my shoulders wondering what the big deal was. There are also some bizarre attempts to poke at and perhaps even break Star Wars canon and lore, but without further exploration and development, they are more frustrating and angering than anything else. The ideas and concepts of the Acolyte are there, but with episodes that are rushed and too short, and writing that needed more polishing and development, very little of it works on an entertainment level. What does work are the action scenes. The Acolyte boasts some very impressive action scenes with great choreography. They're very reminiscent of The Matrix and Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, with style and acrobatics aplenty. They do make me wonder why Jedi before and after these events don't fight like this, but that's perhaps a minor quibble. Sadly, the production elements of this show aren't always impressive. 
Star Wars, even the less good Star Wars content, has always boasted impressive production and visuals. The Acolyte sometimes does when it goes to real world locations, but the sets, the lighting and the props often look a little cheap and shoddy. Considering the huge budget and production values, and comparing this show to rivals like House of the Dragon or The Boys, it's incredibly disappointing that the Acolyte looks so bad in comparison. A lot of it looks like it was filmed on a set with little depth and detail. Star Wars should never be like that. And it's perhaps time to move away from green screen and volume centric shooting and looks and just look at like House of the Dragon for inspiration on production and shooting. Star Wars The Acolyte has all the pieces to be something great but is often let down by underdeveloped writing, rushed editing, poor characterization, disappointing production values and what seems like a desire to push the limits of canon and fandom. The action scenes are great though and the two leads are okay but it's a shame that this show left me caring very little about any of it.